First, Mr. Reed, I see where your client... Your Honor, I would like a continuance! This case has already been delayed several times, Mr. Reed. I realize that, Your Honor, but I would really, really, really like a continuance! I'll have to hear good cause, Counsel. What's the problem? I can't lie! Okay, here's our starting point for this discussion. I'm going to say a word, and you then have to be completely honest about the very first word that pops into your mind. Here we go. Politician. Now, to be fair, there are those of you who thought of words that not only would not be good for a family show in any sense of the imagination whatsoever, but are probably the creative collection of consonants and vowels that some people would immediately write down as being perfectly suited for that profession, uh, most of which would likely include parts of the human anatomy. But I'll wager a lot of you thought things like untrustworthy, fraud, charlatan, liar, because let's face it, we in America have been conditioned that this is what politicians inherently are. So then, could the public handle a really honest candidate for 2016. Welcome back to Midpoint. Professor at the Stony Brook School of Journalism and Newsmax contributor John Friedman joins us from New York. Hi, John. Hi there. Is it not fair to say, John, let's start right out from the beginning. We as Americans, we don't mind being lied to. As a matter of fact, sometimes we like it because it makes us feel nice, warm, snug, and comfy in our beds at night. <laughs> Remember a few good men? You can handle the truth. We can't handle the truth because the truth is just too real in our lives and people don't want to hear it. They want it filtered and they don't want it pure. But shouldn't we want the truth, though? If we're going to put people in a position of authority, people who are going to be making decisions that will change our lives and maybe the lives of the planet in general, why don't we want somebody, really at the core of our being, why don't we want somebody honest there? Remember Jimmy Carter's slogan in 76, I'll never lie to you? He lasted one term. I, I don't think the American people really want to hear the truth. They want to believe they're hearing the truth, but they don't want to really know what's actually going on overseas or with the economy or with immigration. They don't want to know because that's just too real. That requires too much thinking. They want to just have it kind of gilded to them. Why do we want such escapism? Are our lives that bad? I think we are afraid our lives will get that bad. If we know where the economy is going, or the stock market, or the housing prices, or immigration reform, or Obamacare, all these buzzwords we keep hearing about, can you imagine the panic if people really knew what was going on, that things would get worse and not, not better? Let's go ahead and look at some numbers here. Let's start this out. Here's a poll. Now, this comes from the New York Times. It says, do you want Democrats or Republicans to control Congress? It's a pretty simple question. So here you have in 2006, leaning toward Democrat, 2010, leaning a little bit towards Republican, 2014, right in the middle. John, we can't make up our minds, John. <laughs> could we ever? I mean, could we ever in this country make up our minds about which direction to go into? It's always a slingshot. You know, if it's over here, we want it over here and vice versa. The American voter is a funny animal. I mean, we learned this over, the, over many, many years. You basically give this person breaking news all the time with the appearance of breaking news and you'd be far ahead as a politician. Well, now wait a minute here. Let's, let's stop because you've just hit those two words that to me are anathema in many ways of what we do in this business. You use the, the words breaking news. Is it not fair to say that many times the American public, whether it's their politicians, whether it's anything that goes on, has been completely desensitized in many ways to whatever really is important, critical, breaking news, because there are some news networks who use it uh, to basically tell us that the latest uh, celebrity has managed to get a new dress or a new pair of shoes. I buy, I'm wearing old shoes, by the way. I'm wearing an old <laughs> suit. I'm wearing old shoes, so don't don't count me in that discussion. We promise. But you're right. Of course, people people are burnt out by now on headlines and breaking news and 24 hours news coverage. People are a little tired of all of it. But at the same time, if a politician can feed the voter the appearance of new breaking news all the time, that politician will be ahead of the game because the media will then think. This person is good for my business. I'm getting breaking news here. And the media will enable this politician by then helping that person become more famous and more popular. But isn't it also true that many times when we look at elections, we see 
exactly what a candidate stands for. We know, we can look at it, we can, we can hold it in our, our hands, we can look at it on the web, but many times it is the personality that wins the election. It has nothing to do with what actually will affect people from day to day. It's whether or not you smile well, look good, and you have a full head of hair. Uh, no offense, by the way, on that hey, last one. I should cheap, point out. Cheap, I, I know. Cheap shot. I, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll get. I'll get past that one. My my old suit, my cheap shoes, and I'll pass that one too. Okay. But the thing, the thing is that you know what you're really boiling down to it is star power. I mean, you really want to have somebody with star power. Remember the movie Game Change on HBO? How they said that Obama was a star, mm -hmm. and McCain was a hero, but but Obama was a star in 08, and the star trumped the American hero because. Everyone wants to be around somebody famous, somebody who has celebrity status, somebody who's a star. Even people who are following the challenge want to be that kind of person, too. Okay, so then in your sense, let's look at star power. You would agree, I guess, that Barack Obama either had or has that star power. So take Barack Obama, if you will, and then let's go to somebody like Hillary Clinton. In contrast to what Barack Obama is right now, does Hillary Clinton have that star power? She has it to a degree, but I'm not sure it's good or bad for her, to tell you the truth, because we know her so well. Obama came out of nowhere in 08. I mean, really out of nowhere. Ask Hillary about that, by the way. And he became this overnight celebrity, not just a politician, but a, a rock star. He was a, a rock star. And, of course, over time in the White House, his hair has turned grayer, and he's smiling less often because the job has beat you down, I'm sure. But Hillary Clinton has been with us for such a long time, over 20 years by now, I'm not sure if her star power is a good thing or a bad thing for her at this point. Is that what might hold somebody like Elizabeth Warren back? It doesn't make a difference whether or not we actually believe her, whether we think she's telling us the truth, but the fact that right now, to many people, she's not a rock star in any sense of the imagination. She's Gary Cooper. She's James Stewart. She, she's the underdog, speaking for all of us in, her, in our minds. I mean, she has that kind of stoic... New England mentality and persona, kind of like Jimmy Stewart might have projected in Miss Miss Goes to Washington or Gary Cooper in High Noon. I mean, she's out there by herself fighting for all of us. But is it not fair to say that on the other side of that coin, Chris Christie is a guy who for a long time was a rock star and in many people's minds still can be that and has that sort of personality. Uh, he may rub people the wrong way, but again, it comes down to fact, truth, trust, but he still has that ability to grab people's attentions just by speaking. Does he have the trust value, Ed, you think? The trust value is very important. You said trust as one of the words there. After that fiasco last year at the, uh, at the bridge, can we still trust him completely? But will that not go away by the time we get to 2015 even then? Because you and I both know, being students of the media, that many times it doesn't make a difference whether or not you tell the truth or lie. A lot of times things like this just sort of waffle away and they go away and the media has that short attention span and they really will get past it sooner or later. But playing devil's advocate, it never goes away because Wikipedia, Google, YouTube, technology, everything you've ever said or done on tape is now forever because of Wikipedia and Google, especially and YouTube. So I'm not so sure it's going to go away and stay away forever. All right, let's take another tack here. The Mississippi mudsling, all we saw in Mississippi that went on there, people loved it. It's dirty politics. So would it not be <laughs> fair to say that, okay, we want the truth. No, 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 wait a minute. We don't want the truth here. What we want is really good theater, and we want really great charges, counter charges, coups, counter coups, whatever it turns into here, because still in America, we're, we're drama. We're drama kings. We're drama queens. We love that stuff, no matter who it is. Fair? Well, it's fair to a degree. We, we love being surprised. I think Americans love being surprised, especially in politics, when it comes to a debate or a speech. We love that somebody will tell us something we didn't already know in a way we were surprised about. So what happened in Mississippi, I'm sure, was the same kind of thing, where maybe down there it's politics as usual, but up here in the Northeast, where I am, for example, it's, it's a whole different animal. So about the minute or so that I have left here, I'm going to take you back to 1984. Walter Mondale his pledge to raise taxes. He said, and I quote, let's tell the truth, Mr. Reagan will raise taxes and so will I. He won't tell you, I just did, unquote. He lost in a landslide. Could America and would America actually elect somebody president in 2016 who came right out, looked him right in the eye and told him exactly the truth? I think so. I think it could work. I think if people, I said, I said before, but if people will believe that line of logic They'll go along with the politician. If the politician is credible, 
and decisive. If the politician is credible, which means there has to be something, whether it's a he or she, they have to have something in their background that makes people believe they're credible. Does anybody believe politicians are credible in the first place? <laughs> That's the key question. None of the time, I guess. That's really the key question here. There you go. That's why we ask them all the time. We'll have to come back for an answer. We're out of time. John, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank, thank you. My pleasure. All right. Later on this hour, they're toking away in Colorado. So what has been the immediate impact other than an uptick in sales for potato chips and ring dings? And next up on the card, top stories from the Mothership website. We'll check out what's happening at Newsmax.com, bring you up to speed on what we're covering, what you should be listening and watching, and then what you should be commenting on in social media. We'll do that all right here on Midpoint, where every day, Monday through Friday, we question everything.